Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page four, page four. So I'm going to do um, a, a pop-up here. I'm going to show it to you because I already pre-made it, and then we're going to make one together. So it's going to go on top of this. So rather than use a whole sheet for the 8x10, I'm going to frame it out, and we're going to lay this on top. So I wanted to give you kind of an idea of where we're headed. So when this is laid in and fastened, it'll open, I have to kind of hold it in place while I show it to you. It'll open uh, like so to the left and right. So this is what we're going to make and it's gonna look like this when we're finished. These two will be out and we're gonna lay those seams toward the middle. So again, I already pre-made mine, but I just wanted to show it to you. I had to test some of my measurements, but we'll build this together in just a minute. But before we do that, we're gonna add a frame here. This is from, I think it's from the pattern collection, but honestly, I'm not sure. Let me, yeah, I've kind of cut through the master page, so that leaves a lot of questions when I don't have, actually, I take it back. It's from the, it's from this uh, scrapbook pad. So you're going to need, these strips are one inch wide. So each one of these strips is one inch wide. So you're going to need one for the top and two for the sides. And I'm missing a strip. Hopefully I just mislaid it. I'm pretty sure I already trimmed it, but I have paper if I, if I haven't. Okay. So each one of these is going to be, um, a half inch wide and then I want my corners to be mitered and rather than miter all four of them I'm going to lay down the top and bottom strip like so and then we're going to lay in the sides on top of the top and bottom and create that mitered look okay so the way you do your miter is because it's one inch wide you're going to come down one inch so if you lay it on your grid or you use a ruler, you're going to go from your point to one inch. You're going to do that on the top and on the bottom, and you'll do it twice, once for left and right. Um, once you get one made, if you stack them face to face, you can trim the other. Make sure you don't do it this way or your um, miter will be going toward the outside instead of the inside. So make sure once you get one trimmed, you put the pattern that's going to be up face to face and then just follow the cut line of what you've already established. Okay, so um, I'm going to start by putting this down. I've already inked it and then I'm going to try to find my second piece because both of these have to go in before the side pieces. So you'll need two of those. And you can make them wider if you want, but they need to be at least an inch. Um, so that when we put the pop-up mechanism down, there's no gap between it and the uh, pocket page itself. That'll all be clear in just a few minutes. Okay. okay. Now I need to find that other strip real quick. So I know I didn't cut through it. This is the, the two tail ends from the top and the bottom. The one inch strip, I have this left over. Uh, nope, that's not it. Yikes, guess where I found it? In the trash. Oops, this is not the right one. Never mind. It needs to be this pattern. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. What did I do with it, Noah? Thank you. I found it. Yay. Let's see, have I inked it? Yes, I have. Okay. It's tough when you're working with these smaller pieces if you don't lay them down right away. They're very easy to throw away or cut into and repurpose. 
looks like I might need to erase my page four. It might show just a little. So I'll get my pencil marks out. Verify I've got it going right side up. Although this is kind of a universal page, once all the, uh, as far as the interactive elements are, it, it only becomes critical right side up when you put the patterns in. Not this pattern in particular, but the other patterns. Okay, so that's done. As you can see, I've already mitered these two. So I'm going to lay them down just like so. And it's going to give us that mitered look. It's okay if they're not perfect because there's going to be something that lays on top of it slightly. Okay. And then that way we preserve this large piece here to be able to use someplace else. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Looks nice, looks nice and clean. Now, if that troubles you, you can just do straight across and overlap uh, the corners completely. With it. Just, it would look like that instead without the black, right? Okay, so that's done. So we're gonna set this aside and now we're gonna build that pop-up mechanism, okay? So this is the piece we're going to uh, build. When you're finished, it's going to look like this before we lay it down. So this is comprised of three um, panels, so, uh, two with score lines and one without. So you're going to start with a 7 by 9 panel. That's going to be this top piece, and it's just a panel, 7 by 9. Then you're going to cut two 7 by 10s, and that's what these are, 7 by 10, and there's two of them. They're adhered right here. Okay, so go ahead and cut all those pieces out. One seven by nine flat panel, two seven by ten panels, and those panels are going to be scored at. Both of them are going to be scored across um, the ten inch side, a half inch, five, and nine and a half. A half inch, five, nine and a half. Do that two times, and I'm going to cut mine out real quick, and you can watch me construct it. And I'll just set this aside and maybe use it on a different album some other time. Okay. So I'm going to start with seven. Hang on. I did that wrong. Okay, now I'm going to do two ten by sevens. One more. Okay, let's set aside the panel. We're going to go ahead and score these 10 by 7s. They're going to go into your scoreboard on the 10 inch side. You're going to score at half, five, and nine and a half. Oops. And do that two times. Half. Nine and a half. Okay. 
just go ahead and fold it in half. Okay, so now we have these two. Now we've got to tuck in, I have to think about this. Yeah. So we're going to fold these back. So that's one. Two. So you need two of those. We're going to put tape on these hinges. Okay, I'm going to burnish them so they're flat. Okay, I'm going to use glue because this is um, a, it's a repeat, so I'm not going to use tape, but I would recommend tape. Okay. Mm, I take it back. I am going to use tape. It'll take too long for the glue to dry. You have to hold it in place. Now we're going to put both those score lines toward each other like that and this panel is going to lay right on top so we're going to remove the tape and place those right here and I'll show you the way I do it you remove the tape you're going to have tape on the other side but we don't have to do that right now we'll come back to it so I know my scored edge is going to go to the outside so I'm going to line it up here on my scored edge and lay it down. Okay, now it's attached. Now we're going to do the same thing with this one. But we're going to butt it right into what's already there. Okay. And that fits perfect. If it doesn't fit perfect, we have a solution for that too. So there they are. Okay, so that's what we've cut out and what we've done so far. It's pretty straightforward. It looks kind of confusing when you look at the finished product, but it's pretty straightforward. Now, if all your sides aren't even, what you can do is place it in your trimmer and trim off any excess. This has got a tiny bit here, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's very insignificant. Now we're going to go ahead and add tape to the back of these. And I'm just going to put a little bit on here to demonstrate it because from here on, um, I'll pick up the other one that I've already done that's got tape. Okay, so you're going to run that tape all the way down, but this is my demo. Okay, so this is the side that's going to be up on the page, and this is the side that's actually going to attach to your signature. So let's pull the signature back in and the pop up. So there's the pop up, and here is the page it's going to go on so it's going to go just like that and you can see how all the inside edges are going to be covered up so we're going to remove the tape and we're going to center I'm just going to do one um, so it doesn't want to take two together we're going to center this so this is seven by nine and this is eight by ten I'm just going to do it visually, but if you want to uh, create little check marks, you can. This is when you would do it. If you line up your corners with your mitered corners, it helps a little bit. doesn't make it perfect, but it gets you a long way toward center. Okay, so now one side's in. It's this side. And don't worry, that's going to get covered up. And now we're going to do this side. So just take the tape off. Pull the flat panel back around. And when you do, this should collapse. Push it all into place. There we go. 
Now you've got it where it opens to the right and then to the left. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that looks pretty darn centered. So the next thing we need to focus on is how we're going to keep all of this closed. And what I want to use are these two um, elements that are going to reach across and have magnets. Um, I'm going to put a decorative piece in between, something like this. So it actually kind of looks like a bow, but the magnets are going to be more toward this side because these are the edges that you want to hold down. Okay, so let's think about that a little bit. So I know I want a magnet here and a magnet here. So let's go ahead and place those. I have one here and one here. I'm going to flip it so it's polar, so it stops pulling towards the center. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's, I just wanted to put that there so I remember we can come back to these. These are one inch wide, so it's the same as this, and then I just have a little half inch flange on the back. I think I did that right trying to decide where I'm going to put that. Yeah, it's going to be actually fastened right here, but we're going to put a decorative piece over it. So we're going to hold off on that. So when we're ready to put the decorative piece here, that's when we're going to pull these in. So I'll just go ahead and set it there to help me remember. Okay, so this is from the collection pack, and I think it's beautiful. Um, and it's going to fit right here on our top piece. So it's going to go across the whole top piece. We're ready to go ahead and add that in. Um, I'm using my usual 16th inch border, which means based on the panel size, you're going to take off one eighth in height, one eighth in inch, one eighth in height width, and that should give you a sixteenth inch border when you center it, which is pretty straightforward. That's the flip side if you're looking for it. <clears throat> so this makes for um, this is seven by nine. So you could um, put a feature photo here, a five by seven photo, and it would, you know, have a nice border all the way around it. So you'd have a frame, a frame, and then a photo for your top, for your top piece. Okay. Now on the inside, I'm pulling in uh, two patterns, which I'm going to alternate. I'm going to use this tan, pulling this back in from the front, the tan, and then this is going to go right here. And I think I'm going to put a, a mat around it before I put it down because I don't really like it without the black mat. So I may add a, an additional mat. <clears throat> so I'm going to add a mat here. Another way to have done that before we adhered it to this page, instead of it anchoring this directly to the pocket page, if we had another full panel on the black on the back side and attached these two pieces to a seven by nine panel you'd already have um, a black piece that came out this to this size. But I went back and forth. I wasn't sure what I was going to do on this. So I decided to go with one panel to give myself the flexibility to either leave it as is or add a panel. I wasn't sure if I was going to try to put something smaller here or even a pocket or something. So we'll leave it as is. And I, I do think I'm going to come back and add a, bl a black matte to make it look a little more finished. And I trimmed these and I had them in order of how they were going to lay out and then I mixed them up. Yeah. So I went ahead and actually trimmed each one of these to fit a specific panel. So I may have to flip through them to find the right one because um, they're slightly different. It's very slight. Thank you. 
down and it isn't quite in the right play place. Yeah. Now the order you put these in is really up to you if you wanted to do two of the matching patterns in center and two matching on the outsides that's entirely up to you. Here's our last panel. So again, I think I'm going to go ahead and add a black panel behind it. And I'm going to base it on exactly this size because I want it to butt right up against it. So let me trim that down. Perfect. That's going to go right here. And then this is going to go right under it. Oops, it's too big. Did I make that panel too big? Oh, I know why. I know partially why. This is too big. part of it. Okay, it's a little too wide. So the way I'm going to solve that is I'm going to trim it. I don't want it to stick out, so I'm going to trim it. And then I'm going to put the trim edge, trimmed edge over here so you won't see it. Should do it. Let's check. Yep, there we go. Okay, last thing is to ink it. Okay, 
So um, this is seven inches tall, just like the top panel. So I marked at three and a half, which is the midpoint, which is where I'm going to attach this. Okay. So it's just going to get um, adhered to the back with some glue. Double check my mark. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so the top is at three, the bottom is at four. Now I'm ready to, to glue this down. Oh my gosh, and I hope I have the magnets in the right spot. <laughs> We're about to find out. I do. Yay. Okay, so we're going to put a magnet uh, on here as soon as I figure out what I did with it. Yes. Okay, that's awesome. So this is going to get attached to this right here. We're going to do the same thing over here. Okay, start by laying in all the decorative pieces. Okay, now we need to build this. So this time I'm going to do a little bit differently. I'm going to cut it down. I'm going to use a different technique. As soon as I find it. Is this seven already? Oh. Okay, that's seven. I'm going to butt it up against the hinge, close it, and then mark where I'm going to trim it. So trim first, not second, instead of the other way. Okay, so this should be the right measurement now. Yes, it is. Now we can trim this down slightly to fit. As you can see, it's very close. Fact, I think I'm gonna glue it down and then trim it. Okay. 
Now I'm just going to lay it in my trimmer and trim that little sliver off. Okay, now you see nothing. And then I'm going to go ahead and ink it. And we'll use this edge to create the, the um, black border. See, it doesn't have to have a black border on both sides. Okay, so we're just about ready. So the next thing is to mark at the three and a half mark. And then we're going to attach this on the border side at three and a half. You can use tape if you want. There we go. Now the whole thing gets glued down. And we hope the magnet's in the right place. <laughs> I could test it. Let's see where the magnet is. It's kind of high. Nope, it's perfect. We can get we can cover that. Perfect. Yep. It's a little high, but I can manage. So let's go ahead and put I'm just going to trim a little piece of double-sided tape off for each one. If you have basic gray, you don't have to do that. Save yourself a pain, a lot of pain. So these are obviously longer than they need to be and they're gonna I'm gonna straighten those out in just a minute <laughs> they're going to be covered up with one of these That's a lot of red I think I decided to do something like that oh here they are this one I just I'm going to choose. I kind of like that. So I'm just going to attach, I'm going to mat this and I'm going to attach it to one of the two of these. And then when you open this and open this, then this will function. Okay. So the next thing I need to do is find a, um, a contrast to cover up the magnets. I'm going to trim off that little bit of edge. Don't need it. There we go. And then we can go ahead and glue this down permanently. Everything looks beautiful. Okay, let me mat. I kind of like the little blue in it. So I'm going to mat this and attach it to one of these. Perfect. 
I'm using the flip side because I think it's um, better to journal on or add a photo to. So it just looks like a little frame. But you could put like a date on it in the center or the title of an event. Okay. Hmm. I don't think there's any direction really. Yeah, I guess it does kind of go up and around, so that's what I'll do. So it doesn't have to be centered, it could be off to one side or the other, but I'm going to go ahead and center it. This is something that also needs something on the back of it, so let me trim. Let me see what I've got here. I've got this piece, which I can use to cover the back. Just want to make sure that the glue is adhering all the way around the magnet since it's pretty close to the edge. Close but not exposed. And then I'm also going to ink that edge because it's standing out to me. Okay. Okay, take a slower off. I, I should have left a little more room over here on either side um, by either doing an eighth inch gusset, which I, I forgot I could have done that, or I can just cut this down a little bit smaller um, so that it's not hanging off on its own. Um, so let me think about what I want to do there. I don't know if I can cut it without, I cut it straight as the, uh, 
Is what? No, it's going to be too much interference. Okay. So when it's flat, it's okay. But when it gets all this bulk in here, it needs a little bit more room. So I'm going to cut it. So I'm going to use my straight edge and trim it and then we'll re-ink it and I may have to trim it you know a couple of times I'm going to score it lightly so I don't cut through the hinge Perfect. Well done. So there's how it started. There's how I ended it. So what I'm doing is I'm placing my straight edge so that it's following this border straight down. So there's, you see how there's an interruption border, stop, border. I'm just going to put the ruler right up to that border and then trim. That's the line I'm choosing. And I'm just doing like medium pressure so that I only cut through the designer paper. Beautiful. Now I'm going to come back in with a tiny bit of ink. And soften that white edge. Do the same thing over here. Sorry, it's hard for me to see, so I'm pulling it to me, but I'll show you the result. It's kind of halfway because I don't think the ink wants to stick to the glue. Yeah, good enough, good enough. Looks a, a lot better than it did. Okay, the last piece, we'll put something on the back of this and it's gonna go right here. What do I wanna put on the back of this? A scrap, I don't wanna cut something in perfect for this. I want to adhere it on this side. Remember, you're only going to do one side. And this is just going to lay on top to hold that in place. You could have had the bands go across and then attach to each other, but I wanted something like this. They have to split apart to open the mechanism. So if you decide to design something slightly different, just keep that in mind. Both sides have to raise in order for um, the mechanism to work. Okay, that's 
page four. I hope you guys enjoyed. I've done this before. It's been a while. I had to sort of reteach myself. So hopefully um, that was clear enough for you guys when I get back. Um, we'll be working on page five. So if you haven't already set aside these patterns, they will be reintroduced in page five since it's a two page layout. And yeah, I'll be back sooner rather than later to work on page five. Thanks for tuning in. As always, this is Daphne from Scrap and Create. We'll see you soon.